on this episode of Five Rings Canes. It's all about reviewing Paradise Camp. I had a chance to get out there. Larry Bluestein, of course, went out there. And our buddy Jazz Santana, who's going to be joining us, was out there as well. <coughs> this episode and all of our episodes are brought to you by our good friends at Biscayne Bay Brewing. They are the official craft beer of the Miami Marlins and the official independent brewery of the Miami Heat. They are South Florida's actual independent brewery. Biscayne Bay is owned by local guys who employ people right here in this community to make their beer right here in South Florida. And the beer is delicious, guys. They are committed at Biscayne Bay to our community and they support Five Reasons Sports. So people like Blue Blue and I can keep bringing you all the local sports content you can handle. So if you care about supporting local business, which we all should, and drinking amazing beer, I know I do, you can grab their stuff like Marlins Lager, Miami Pale Ale, Tropical Bay IPA. I, I had that emergency grocery run a couple weekends ago where I <laughs> stocked up on Tropical Bay IPA. It's a beautiful thing. Grab them at all major retailers throughout South Florida. Blue, you bring us a special feature each and every week here on Five Rings Canes. You are our sommelier of Biscayne Bay Brewing. What is your sandwich pairing of the week? Now, on Sunday, after being on the road much of uh, June, uh, you know, I, I said to my wife, you know, um, I'm going to eat some a nice meatloaf sandwich. We, we just got a, a new bottle of, uh, I love the Stubbs Mop sauce a little spice to it on a on a just a just a fresh hard roll and then you know me i mean I, i'm a chips guy i'm a pretzel guy but i got some public sweet coleslaw this week Ooh. so had some of that so i had a nice meatloaf sandwich you would like it i don't know how you are on barbecue sauce but i, I don't drown it with it i just give it a little taste to it it's a good little spice and then all of a sudden sitting there and my wife goes, was the beer supposed to stay in the freezer? I said, wait, <laughs> I put that in there only to, to cool it off a little bit. And I guess it got so icy cold. And I'll tell you what, it, it didn't freeze, but I'll tell you what, it was close. But I will tell you this. I drank and I, I, I don't normally tell people how much I drink, but I drank three Miami pale ale before yeah. I think before before I had a bite of the sandwich. Uh, it was so when it's that cold, you know, I don't have to tell all you guys and Alex, you know, when something is that ice cold, it goes down so smooth. It's already a smooth beer, but to have that really, really chill to it. And then I proceeded to knock down that sandwich with some coleslaw. I did to manage on Sunday uh, to to finish my entire six of Miami Pale Ale. And, you know, I've had every single one now, every single one. Over and over again, it, it, I find myself looking forward to it. Every single, and, and now, you know, I used to say, you know, I'm only going to drink once or twice, you know, but now I find myself getting a couple of sixes like you and just yep. having them on, having them cold in the refrigerator, just go and, you know, quench the thirst, maybe watching a game and got a chance to, to see a little bit of the soccer the other night, uh, you know, Lovely. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, watching your team, uh, your, uh, your country team uh, did yeah, pretty well. Yes, 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 yes. So I made it. Uh, I'm, I like soccer. I don't. I try to fish people and do it. And I used to, like I told you, I used to cover the strikers back in the day and the Toros and the Miami Gatos and everybody. So I've been a soccer fan. I enjoyed it immensely. Got some really good game. I had some left over. Watched Switzerland pull the major upset. Uh, so yeah. um, I've had a good weekend. And uh, it was all, all two Miami's. Biscayne Bay Brewery, and uh, as Alex said, they are homeboys. They love to immerse themselves right here in the community, and they check out. They, they them, and Alex have always banter around uh, on, on social media. Great company, great product, and I thoroughly enjoy it every time. Amen to that. Biscayne Bay Brewing. It is the only beer we drink here at Five Reasons Sports. Hello and welcome into another episode of Five Rings Canes on the Five Reasons Sports Network, fresh off Paradise Camp. All three of us got a chance to go out there. I am Alex Dono, alongside, as always, Larry Bluestein. Blue, good evening to you, sir. I hope you're doing well. It was nice seeing your beautiful face again. I don't know how long it's been since I've actually seen you in person, but it was nice seeing I you out there in Coral Gables. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks. It was great seeing you as well. I think the last... 
Last time I saw you in person was like, I think you were doing a show. And then I came in right after you to do one. And that was a long, no, it's a long time. But you and I always talk and we, you know, try to get everything in, you know, in. And I enjoyed it. And great seeing jazz as well. And uh, they had a bunch of people down there. And I got my picture taken with the, the master Luther Campbell and all that. Oh, you took a picture with, you know, I, I saw Uncle, we, all three of us, we saw Uncle Luke out there and, uh, you know, I, th I think he might have just come down for the sole purpose of like getting ammunition to trash talk about the program. But I am a big fan of his in, in all in all realism. So it was nice to shake his hand because I think the last time I saw him in person was over a decade ago. So it was nice to see Uncle <laughs> Luke again. It was even better to see this man out there, Jazz Santana from the sixth ring, our colleague here at the Five Reasons Sports Network. Jazz, it was nice seeing you out there on Saturday night. How are you, sir? I am doing well, my friend. Thank you so much, Donald. It's good to see you. Good to see Bluestein. And by the way, every time I see Luther Campbell, I can't help but to think of that album cover and Two Live Crew. That's it. I don't even yep. equate them with football. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It drives me crazy. But that's that's, that's funny. <laughs> You know, and, and Jazz, I wanted to start with you because, uh, you know, you, you had me out there, not that I really needed your influence on this because I love watching quarterbacks, but we were watching the quarterbacks out there slinging it in some of those Paradise Camp drills, and we were watching 14-year-old sensation from Trinity Christian, uh, Colin Hurley, and as you predicted on the sixth ring last week, uh, eighth grader, or I guess he just was in eighth grade, ends up getting an offer from Miami. That was something you predicted, correct? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I I can't take all the credit in the world for discovering the kid. I mean, uh, some of the other people, you know, uh, in our, not only in our network, but in other, uh, uh, other Canes, uh, uh, you know, recruiting um, areas kind of put me onto the kid and I started watching this tape and I said, this kid's absolutely unreal. Uh, so when, um, you know, when I went out there and I said, this is the first kid I want to see, I want to see him throw, I want to see his mechanics. I just want to see his composure as, like you said, a 14 year old kid. Um, and obviously, you know, we, we, we spoke about the, those great stories that I got to meet his dad, uh, Charlie Hurley, who was a former police officer down here in Miami Dade, uh, coached at Central High back in the day. Um, and some other places. And now they're up in, uh, I believe it's Jacksonville. And uh, just the stories that he was telling me about, you know, how he's, he's a, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? He's a tape nerd, a tape junkie. Uh, yeah. Tape um, junkie. You know, a film, yeah. film, nerd, film, guess, junkie. Junkie. film junkie. There it is. <laughs> uh, and how he is already watching film of Rhett Lashley's offense here in Miami. Right. And how he picked up on one of the plays. Uh, it's our same route concept that they use at Trinity Christian, um, but they call it something different. How he went up to Coach Likens and um, talked to him and Coach Lashley and talked to him about that specific route concept. And that's not something you hear too often out of a 14-year-old. I mean, out of any uh, high school football player, really, nonetheless, a 14-year-old uh, quarterback uh, who's out there doing this. So you, you can tell he's in the books. He's learning uh, route concepts already from the school that we we kind of um, have him uh, tab that, you know, really committing to Miami sooner or later. He's a huge Miami fan. But um, yeah, I, I told you, Don, I said, this kid's going to get an offer after the after after this weekend's done. And he didn't have the best weekend, but you can see his talent. You can see right. his arm strength already. So it was really exciting to see him play a little bit. Well, and, and yeah, you, you mentioned him liking Miami. Uh, I mean, when he wrote a tweet about getting his offer, he included an edit where he's wearing a University of Miami jersey. So it's pretty clear that, and listen, I know a lot can change between age 14 and age 17, but it's pretty clear that he's a fan of the program and that he really appreciated getting that offer. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, 14 is young, but uh, Blue, Dono, you guys know this quarterbacks are usually the first ones to commit and they usually commit early uh, a year, not even a year, two or three years in advance is when you really start seeing some of these big time quarterbacks start to commit or start to really look hard at a certain number of schools. They really kind of narrow it down. Um, so if you can get a guy like Colin Hurley coming in already a 2025 kid um, and see his development um, as he, you know, rises through, you know, his, his uh, now his uh, freshman, sophomore, junior years, um, I think that's important to have a guy like that already, um, you know, in the works. Yeah. And he looked good to me in drills. We saw him throwing to a number of different routes. Uh, the arm strength 
spirals look solid. You can tell he's got the poise and the intelligence. Uh, your take, Blue, on Colin Hurley. Now, I know that you've been in this game covering recruiting for a long time, so you've seen many a 14-year-old get offers, and sometimes you know kids at that age end up changing their minds two, three, four, five times before they All ultimately right. sign their national letter of intent. So, you know, your your take on this young man and and what you know four years from now he could add to the program. Well, yeah, obviously, you know, I mean, he, he had an opportunity last year to watch and learn a lot of stuff uh, during a state championship year. They beat Chaminade in the state title game in 3A. And, um, yeah, he just being around people, you know, that that um, in that area and at Trinity Christian, uh, they there you have a coach who's been there for like 29, 30 years. Um, they, they've got a great staff. Uh, they have a lot of two, you know, a lot of people up in that area that work with the quarterback. So he's been exposed to to a lot of good competition. That Jacksonville area is spread out. They have a lot of a really good talent, uh, and and I was impressed. You know, I mean, I'm I was impressed. I've seen him before. Uh, you know, I mean, and obviously, uh, it's tough to put a kid in the 25 class on the radar right now because that's yeah. you know you're talking eighth grade, but now they're coming in the ninth. Grade. And now they're going to be just like a lot of those kids. And that, I thought that was the theme of this camp because other than maybe an Earl little who uh, I thought did real well and, and, and showed a lot of class by coming out and working out. And, and I've, I've took the other kids to task because mm -hmm. I say this, if I'm B, D, uh, Baez or one of those people ahead of recruiting, I'd prefer you if you, if you're not going to come and work out, you know, to come at another time, because I, I just think that those kids hanging out were just, what is, what was that for? I mean, you There's know, a lot of kids doing that. Like it's, it, yeah. It, well, it, it, it almost feels like it's the NFL combine when you've got like a bunch of those guys who thinks, Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm too important to actually work out. Waste of time. And there was a lot of players who did that. Yeah. It, I think you waste the kids time. Everybody was there and, you know, that showed up. I mean, I, I, I was really impressed with the 23 kids, you know, as well as some of the, the 22 kids that made an opportunity, the David Connor kid, the six, eight transfer from it landed at a Deerfield beach. I thought he made a huge impact. I mean, there's a big body kid that's going to be on a really, really good football team. I mean, like I said, you, you take a look at um, uh, Earl Little's kid and then I thought he did an awesome job and, you know, he busted his tail. He didn't, you know, he was there to, to kind of like impress. Uh, and then to get out of state kids like the Sean Wilson kid from uh, Christ the King up in New York, he was a beast. He was a six, five kid. Um, you know, Miami very much on his radar, but he's getting hawked by everybody in the Northeast and the Big Ten as well. And obviously being at that camp was huge. I thought having uh, the kid Antoine Jackson, who I think is going to be one of the best corners at 2024 kid out of Dillard High School. I mean, he's going to be one of the best in the country to have him there and then get get a Benjamin Hudson, the linebacker from Bishop Gorman. And, you know, he's a, a kid. It's like looking at Utah and Cal and Oregon and to get him because of his dad went to high school down here and uh, he wanted his son to get a, a you know, a, a taste of what this type of competition is, you know, all the way around. Not that he doesn't get it at Gorman because they got kids, but having those guys, having him there, I thought that was huge. And, and, and getting a guy like the, the Amari Farrell kid, who I thought he's a safety out of Lake city, Columbia, right out North of Gainesville. Um, you know, he's got the kid Peterson, who's also really good, but I'll, I'll tell you, this is a 23 kid. He's got size. He's a safety and, and Miami trying to plant seeds because I think that they really know the targets in 22. I really do. Now, now they have to go get them, you know, I mean, now they have to go get them in the next, three weeks uh, to, because you don't want to get left behind. You don't want to be in that if or and scenario. You want to land these kids, the Wesley Besaint. I think you need to get his commitment because once you do it, I'll start the ball rolling. So did, did Wesley Besaint, did he put the U on right side up at, at the camp or, or what, what it didn't was work out? He, 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 he made plenty of headlines the day before. Yeah, but he didn't, he didn't even work out. So, I mean, yeah. he, you know, I mean, I love the kid to death, but you know what, if you're not going to work out, why come, you know, let the guys that are there, let them look at them. You know, I mean, that's what I said. I mean, you know, these kids are all stars in their own right. And they're going to have a great futures, but you know, I think the other day was kind of set up for the, the kids who were tweeners guys that they didn't know a lot about and that don't see very much. And some of the 23 and 24 kids. 
Yeah, no doubt. And and Blue, uh, I, I, you've been to camps all over the state in the last couple of weeks, um, you know, and, and you got to experience Paradise Camp in Coral Gables on Saturday. How did the vibe, the presentation, the professionalism, like how does Miami's camp compare to some of the others you've been to? Well, I think it does. It compares it in a great way because Miami, like all these other schools, made an effort not only to, to stroll out the, the guys that are currently on the team around everybody, all the recruits and stuff like that, you know, whether it be a seven on seven and they worked as referees or just the other night hanging out. But if you notice, Jazz, uh, the other night, they kept that 2021 class pretty close together. Kinchins, Williams, all those kids in that class. So, and they had their shirts on with their names on the back. So everybody could see the Khalil Brantleys and Romello Brinsons and such. And, uh, you know, and Leonard Taylors and all those guys that represent probably one of the best classes Miami's had in a long time. Well, yeah. And not only that, but you also got a lot of kids that are working out the 2023 kids and some 22s that are, that were teammates with these guys. Not, you know, not even a year ago. Yeah. Uh, it's nice. Like you said, it's nice here. Here's one thing that I will tell you blue that I think <clears throat> is a good reason why some of those kids were on campus that didn't work out. This is a, this was the last weekend before the dead period to get anybody on campus. Um, and even some of these kids that are maybe on the fence 50, 50 or, Perfect example is a kid like Devin Jackson, yeah. uh, who had who had Arizona State. Um, you know, it came out later that Arizona State was leading over Miami, and now he came out after his visit this weekend. Which, by the way, he looks like a defensive end, but he's a <laughs> linebacker. Um, he almost as big as Shamar Stewart, which was uh, pretty impressive. But um, uh, he now he now says that it's more of a fifty. It's it's a fifty fifty, and now he's really trying to weigh his options. He pushed back his <clears throat> date. So I think it's important, even the kids that don't work out, to get them on campus before the dead period gives the coaches a chance to get in their ear. It gives a, gives a chance like John Beeson and Calias Campbell to get in the ear of a, a Demario Tolan, who we saw right in front of us uh, being recruited right in front of us. That was uh, so cool. Coach Ish was doing a great job of getting all these former players, Calias Campbell then talking to Shamar Stewart um, and Marvin Jones and some of the other guys that were out there that weren't working out. I think that's just as important, especially nowadays in the recruiting era, when you get some of these kids that are from, uh, you know, a little further out, Orlando, Jacksonville, that, you know, maybe don't get down here as much as they should to get them here, even if they didn't work out before the dead period. I know that after the dead period, they can still visit again and all that, but, you know, it might, it might help getting these coaches in their ears again. So I was excited to see that. Now, I mean, if we're talking 2023 kids, uh, yeah, he, this kid, um, David Hicks, uh, uh f- from uh, from Texas, a defensive end from te- Texas, came out and really basically dominated every everybody on the offensive line. I will say that maybe the offensive line was the weakest point as far as uh, recruits that were out there, except for the biggest bright spot, um, the brightest spot, which was Snoop Amama, uh, the kid that came down from uh, I believe he's from up in Utah, he's a big, yeah. Player. Big Simone kid, uh, who made the, the you know made the uh, the trip all the way down here and and got his offer after and he was really he was an absolute monster. He's starting to get really uh, his looks now from places like USC and Washington and those type of schools. And when you can get a kid from all the way on the other side of the world basically to come over and work out for you, I think that plays well. I think that's a that's a good thing. He's got a mean streak and he mm-hmm. he really did kick butt in 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 one v ones against a lot of these uh, defensive ends as well. So, I mean, I was excited to see those guys. And Blue, by the way, the kid that we saw that uh, really kind of stole the show, a wide receiver, Jeremiah Shaq, who we kept saying was from- Yeah, Canada. from Mandarin, right. Yeah, awesome. from Mandarin, the kid out of Mandarin. Uh, that's another big kid, right? 6'3", six, 6'4", six, uh, can go up and get it. So I was excited to see him play. I was excited to see him. Uh, well, uh, not excited to see him, but this is the first time I see him, but I was yeah. impressed, impressed by his play. Uh, and, and again, there were some other guys out there that, that really showed out. So Tyler Aronson is another kid of uh, 20, young kid. Yeah. Yeah. 2023. Uh, six He's a 24 kid actually. Is so he, he 24? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He played last year as a freshman at Benjamin. At Benjamin. So, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. That's another kid that Miami's looking at hard as well. So it was nice. It was, it was exciting to see those kids yeah. go out there and perform. 
I got a follow on Twitter from Jeremiah Shack, so I'm hoping that's a good sign. He's leaning to Miami, <laughs> right? If I if, if I can if I can become Manny Diaz's best recruiter, uh, I, I will take that position. I won't even demand uh, a high fee for it, a very low fee. I will take. You know, you you guys both mentioned something, and and Jazz, you touched on this a little bit. You know, seeing uh, Calais Campbell out there, who I I thought to me the most fun that I had was watching the former players working some of their mojo and talking to these recruits. And I thought <laughs> Calais Campbell looked to be Miami's best recruiter on the night. John Beeson was having some major conversations with some players, some prospects as well, which was great. And at the camp, I mean, this is something Miami is capable of doing. When you talk about the caliber of alumni, some of the best players, you know, to grace the National Football League, to have a guy like Michael Irvin making an incredible speech, which I'm sure oh, yeah. is just right off the top of his head before the camp started, you know, to have guys like Michael Irvin, Calais Campbell, John Beeson, Dwayne Starks, even our buddy, the old punter, Brian Monroe was out there. Yeah. You know, have, and, and, you know, more recent alums like, like Greg Rousseau, who was just drafted to the NFL. He was out there as well. I mean, and Bush, he, who is a great guy Miami can offer that not a lot of schools can when it comes to the yeah. quality of alumni out there yeah no doubt i mean i i'll tell you this uh, you know i mean getting an opportunity probably the best time is when i was standing out uh inside and and there was calais campbell talking with Jaden phillips and uh I, I remember him saying because he walked up and they you know they shook hands and what's up man and he you know i hope everything is good with you and he says yeah yeah he said well he said, let me tell you something, brother. I watched you. And he says, my, my, here's my phone. I want you to have it anytime you need anything, you know, questions, things that may be holding you up, slumps or anything like that. I want you to give me a call because I, he says, I've been through it all. And uh, he says, you're going to be special. So that was awesome. I, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking it was just me and those two and that was it. <laughs> and, you know, and, uh, but you get to see, like you said, Calais Campbell, not only a great, football player but he's like man of the year stuff you know i mean this is guy who does more more things in every community you know and more you know and he and his wife and it's awesome so uh, to see that and then as you mentioned to see the uh, the former players michael Irvin. it doesn't matter who you are where you are he's ready he did have a good time and, and that's the way he is. You know, you can't fault him for the way he is. Uh, yeah, he made a few mistakes along the way, but he comes out and he he's 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 easy to like. He's no longer a wide receiver, by the way. He he looks like a linebacker now. He can yeah, well, <laughs> age does that to you, Jazz. Oh, well, I mean, listen. <laughs> When I get older, if I look like a linebacker, I'll be happy with that. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I thought he looked the, the veins were popping. Like he looks oh, in yeah. really good shape, Michael Irvin. I mean, Jazz, what did you think about some of the the recruiting we saw from the former players? Like you mentioned, you and I were standing for a bit uh, you know, in the vicinity of uh, of Calais Campbell and John Beeson and they were really and 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 you know this wasn't like you know Al Golden used car salesman kind of stuff I mean this is <laughs> genuine you know legitimate they looked like they were having heart-to-heart -heart conversations with some of these players you know taking pictures because some of the players were geeking out to meeting them in person I thought it was really great to see them out there working their magic well look I, I you know the truth is that how how important is it and how great how exciting is it to have two, not one, but two first round picks from this year's draft at one of the most, you know, I guess one of the most uh, uh, important positions on the field, uh, yeah. defensive line in your own backyard in this, yeah. camp, in this camp, when, when you got all these big time, uh, the Marvin Jones of the world, the Shamar Stewart's, uh, the kid you mentioned, uh, blue, the big six foot eight kid, uh, David. Yeah. Hill. Uh, there's a there was a small guy I call him uh, I call him little Dwight Freeney who <laughs> dominated a lot to a defensive end he's a kid out of Central uh, he's got a, a, a Haitian last name I can't remember his name Jean something uh, Blue you might recognize uh, right Pierre I think yeah Jean Pierre, Pierre that kid uh huh um, that, that kid was an absolute stud on the field as well if you saw he won right. a lot of reps also so having guys like Phillips and Rousseau Calias Campbell who was hard to miss anyways um, yeah some of the other guys there in their ear, just talking to them. 
that's huge. They may not know some of the older names like the Dwayne Starks or, um, you know, even like Kenny Phillips and stuff, unless they're legacy kids and they've hung, you know, parents have hung out together. But uh, when you get guys like, like Campbell and like Phillips and, and Rousseau, you know, and, and even some guys like, um, uh, what's this guy's name? I'm, I'm losing my job. KJ Osborne, who's oh, yes, in yes, yes, yes. the league, yeah. you know, some of those kids that were there, uh, <laughs> It, that that's huge that is huge because you know other other schools may have a draft pick or two unless you're the clemsons or alabamas or or even fsu in florida but like you know they go to these camps and they're not going to see the amount of hall of famers slash pro bowlers all pros um you know former players in their camp uh, you know help not only recruiting but helping them coach them up and you're you're getting this coaching from some of the best that that ever did it down here so you know, that's huge. That's huge for Miami. It's huge for the camp. Uh, I mean, even bringing Joel Rodriguez, who probably half those kids have no idea who he is. Um, but once he gets in your ear and you hear him, oh, geez. Once he gets, <laughs> story of my life. With Manny you Diaz calling you. Yeah, that's that was Manny. I had to hang up. Stop talking um, about us. Something I will take blue as a, as a sign of encouragement. Uh, you know, uh, you know, there were current players out there as well, of course, in addition to former players and recruits. And I saw our guy, De'Ara King, no brace of any kind on his knee. Nice. Wasn't walking with any sort of a limp. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, late June right now. So we still have, what, about two and a half months until Miami opens up the season against the Crimson Tide. Just based on the way De'Ara was looking and walking, I'm going to take it as a good sign that he is on the right track to be ready for September 4th. Yeah, well, uh, I'll tell you, I, I, I saw him earlier and I, you know, I he probably had just been working out. Obviously, it's it's getting stronger, uh, but but those next six, seven weeks are going to tell a lot. Um, you know, when you take a look at, um, uh, you know, the, the, the tough thing about coming back from an injury is probably is mental. Uh, you know, that you're always it's not going to he's going to you know, obviously he's got all the, the people doing rehab and he's past that and working on his own and doing all that stuff. It's just mentally, it's that first real hit where they're not blowing the whistle when someone gets within three feet of you. So that's the thing that you always got to worry about, but yep. It was great to see that Alex. It was great to see him out there. And, uh, that offense is going to be fun to watch. I think, uh, you know, it, uh, you, you, you look at the kid Rambo, uh, make, I think he'll elevate everybody else. We saw a Harley who really, really uh, knows that if he can have a fairly good year, he'll get drafted because he runs a 4-3-6. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think there's a lot to look forward to defensively. We know that a lot of young kids are going to end up playing, uh, you know, I believe. Are you tired of losing in fantasy sports? Well, times are changing. Now it's just you versus the numbers. Prize Picks is the perfect place for you, whether the injury bug ruined your season long team or you're a seasoned vet in the daily fantasy space. On Prize Picks, you simply select two, three, or four players and predict if they're going to go over or under their fantasy projection. Price Picks gives you the chance to win 10 times your money for getting four predictions correct. Entries are so simple, they can be made in less than 60 seconds, guys. So sign up today at prizepicks.com or on the Price Picks mobile app, which is so great and so easy. Use our code 5. That's right, we have a hookup. Just use our code F I V E 5 to get a 100% match on your first deposit up to $100. This combines my love for fantasy and parlays. Prize picks truly is daily fantasy simplified. And we are brought to you by our good friends at Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Big news, Manscaped has released their new cologne scent to help you feel good and smell good all over at all times. Who knew smelling this good could feel this good, too? Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide, so join the movement for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. 
You know, you guys know that uh, I have learned over the years how important it is to keep that area finely trimmed. And also, smelling terrific is important because nobody wants to smell your BO, especially not down there. Everyone knows that Manscaped has the perfect package 3.0 for all your below-the-waist grooming needs, but they didn't stop there. You can complete your grooming game with the new Refined Cologne Signature Scent by Manscaped. With the same signature scent that's in all Manscaped formulas, this cologne is the perfect complement to the collection. Light, approachable, and gentlemanly in all the right ways. Think of it as your wingman for the night to keep you fresh and ready for anything. And I mean anything. It's calming and inviting. This signature scent introduces a light citrus burst before settling in to the anchoring notes of vetiver and a woodsy masculine finish. This 50 milliliter sp spray cologne is even hypoallergenic, cruelty-free, dye-free, paraben-free, and 100% vegan. This beautifully designed glass bottle makes a statement, and the manly scent is attractive to set the mood. Also, be sure to check out the perfect package with all the essentials for your below-the-waist grooming needs, including the new Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer and crop formulations. Yes, I'm talking about ball deodorant and toner to keep your testes their besties. And you can now use the new Manscaped Refined Cologne to complete your set and smell great anytime, anywhere. It's time to feel sexy. Hey, by the way, we have a hookup. You can get 20% off plus free shipping with our code 5RSN. That's the number 5RSN at manscaped.com. Your balls and body will thank you. You know, something that's going to be an area of, of emphasis, emphasis in recruiting for the class of 2022, and I'm sure 2023, 2024 as well, is linebacker. Now, Miami has been named a finalist for linebacker Demario Tolan, a name that we mm -hmm. haven't mentioned. Uh, so the finalists are, you know, Miami along with Clemson, Florida State, LSU, and Tennessee. So what do you think, Blue? Do you have any crystal ball on this young man? Where do you think he's trending? Well, when he was at, uh, he, he just transferred to Dr. Phillips. He was at Toho, which is a little bit further south. And, you know, I had a chance to see him at the, um, at the Under Armour camp in Winter Garden in West, West Orange. Uh, oh, back in, I want to say April or, um, yeah, about, yeah, April. And <clears throat> we had talked and uh, he at the time said, you know, Miami was really the first school that came in on us. You know, and he says, and I always, always, I'll never forget that. So if you get an opportunity, you know, to, to, uh, to understand the recruiting and, and somebody comes in early and shows you love and never goes away and, uh, you know, uh, gives, gives you an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with somebody like a John Beeson, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and um, yeah, I think Miami's definitely really, I think right now, if I have to say, I think he inks with Miami or commits to Miami anyway. Well, and, and Jazz, there's certainly – there's such an immediate need for linebackers at Miami. I mean, doesn't a guy like Demario Tolan, he has to know that if he comes to Miami, there's a major path to serious playing time there. Yeah. Uh, we need we need the big three that we've been talking about, right? Uh, Tolan, yep. one of them. It's it's Besanth, it's Tolan, and it's Jackson. I think it's a race right now for Tolan. It's between – I think it's an LSU-Miami race. Uh, I, th I think that him being here this weekend and getting to talk to these, all these guys and uh, um, putting on, you know, the jersey, the orange and green, I think that that played uh, big for for him making his decision down the road. I think uh, his his commitment is coming up soon too. I don't think he's going to wait too long to make his commitment. Uh, there, and there's a lot of guys that are actually going to commit July 4th. I think July 4th yeah. is going to be a good day for the Miami Hurricanes from a commitment perspective. I'm trying to pull up the list here while we, while we chat about it. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be huge to get a kid like Demario Tolan. He, he will get that significant playing time. And I know us three have spoken about this a lot. Um, you know, the, the lack of, of development at, in, in the linebacker uh, room, <clears throat> right? Uh, Corey yeah. Fine. It's Corey Flagg and the rest of the field. Mm. Yeah, it really is, unfortunately, because Brooks yeah. never has lived up or stayed healthy yeah, enough can't yet. Stay healthy. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so you're gonna need a kid like that. I mean, look, a, a kid like Deshaun Troutman that is on 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 campus right now, he still needs a little bit of development as well. So if you can get guys like Tolan, um, Devin Jackson, the Saint, they might be ready to play right away. 
not only that, they might need to be ready to play right away. So I think it's important to get a kid like Tolan um, to pull the trigger. And yeah, yeah, I, I can see him crystal balled, I guess they say, uh, t- to Miami. <laughs> uh, I, I think that he's he's a lean. I think Devin Jackson is kind of leaning as well. And and, and Basaith as well, regardless of what happened with FSU. Look, yeah, you know, he apologized about it. He said it was in poor choice. He says that FSU coaches – kind of not forced them to do it, but kind of requested it. They're, they're a bunch of losers. Like these FSU coaches, like they're, they're, they're trying to mislead young men, high school kids like that to troll the university of Miami. I mean, they can't beat Miami on the field in what the last four years. And so now they're just trying to troll Miami off the field. It's, it's immature. It's ridiculous. And quite frankly, they put this young man in a really bad spot. Now, you know, I, I, I'm still hoping he ends up at Miami. I see some idiots who call themselves Miami fans on social media who are like, oh, if he's going to put the U upside down, I don't even want this kid here. No, oh, get out of here. It, it's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, Jazz put it best. He was led into doing that. It was a stupid stunt that he shouldn't have been pressured into doing. And this should not affect how anyone feels about what a 16 year old kid. I mean, it, it's absurd for any Miami fan to say they don't, have, they don't want him because of that. I mean, listen, if you're, if you're a grown man, and you're tweeting 16 year old kids and telling them off and telling them ugly things and, and, and doing that, then you, you, you got to pick up a hobby, man. You got to figure, yeah, well. you, you gotta figure out something to do because that, first of all, it doesn't look good for you as a, as a, as a grown person, but it, it also plays. I mean, these kids change their minds more than their underwear. So you <laughs> got to know that if you're going to talk to them that way, they're, they're going to, they may react in a, in a negative light and then you lose out of, on a potential, you know, stud player in this class. So yeah, well, I can tell you this: uh, hey, these people need to to back off because when you take a look at this guy, I mean, I've covered him since the ninth grade. He was a basketball star. The guy has springs in his legs. Great kid, over three zero GPA. He's been on our radio show twice because right. he's great to talk to. Uh, yeah, he's. Whatever it was, it was he's got to remember he's 17 years old and it's going to happen, you know, so move on. The kid, the kid is a, a real program changer. He's one of those linebackers that's going to eventually get to the 230 range and he's got the speed to go to sideline to sideline and he's strong and he's agile and yeah, he's a freak and he's a must get. He's going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, 100%. So, you know, I, I want to read uh, some comments made by a former player. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't even know why we invite this guy to stuff because he doesn't have a whole lot of nice things to say. I, I guess by his standards compared to some of his tweets, this wasn't so bad. But uh, Joaquin Gonzalez uh, was at Paradise Camp, and uh, and and I read these uh, comments he made in a Barry Jackson piece. So I'm not sure if he said this uh, exclusively to Barry or if he was in a scrum or something. But Joaquin Gonzalez, you know, former offensive tackle at Miami, said, "quote." This is a big year for the program to step up and grow. They've had a lot of recruiting classes come through here with a lot of talent. Development, he says, has always been a question for a lot of years here. I can't argue with that. He says, if they can put it all together, it's simple. Win the games that we're supposed to win. Compete in the ones that we know we're going to have a tough time. We don't have to win those, he said. Uh, He says, lose to Alabama by bleeping 10, not by bleeping 35, and compete and show that you belong to play an opponent like that. We haven't seen that. We have a a first test in Alabama. Let's be realists. I want them to win. I expect them to win. I I don't know if he really does expect them to win, though, based on what he said before that. uh, But he continues, but I feel more important right now, given the state of the program, the way it's been the last couple of years, I want them to show some progression, show some balls and bleep and compete. We have the talent, he said. Well, first of all, like Blue, I, I don't I mean, we, we, we have the talent for what? I mean, maybe we have the talent to beat uh, North Carolina. I, I don't I don't really know if we have the talent to beat Alabama. Now, he did say lose to Alabama by 10, not 35. Then he also says, I expect them to win. I, I don't really know how mm. that uh, how how the two of those comments coincide. But what do you think about all that? Well, you know, I, I work with Joaquin on the post game show and good guy. Uh, you know, I've known him ever since he was in high school. I mean, this is a kid had a chance to go to the university of Miami or Harvard. So, you know, a very smart guy. His, he has a son now as a freshman quarterback at Columbus. And, um, I understand it. Just the thing is, is he has to look at the roster and, 
and realize that Miami doesn't have a roster to compete with those top teams yet. I mean, they have really good on offense. Uh, remember two years ago, we were wondering what the hell is going to happen with the offensive line. It got dramatically better for a number of reasons. You know, Garen Justice is the main reason, but the kids matured. Kids started living up to their potential. Quarterback-wise, we know. It's defensively, that really bothers a lot of people. They're not very deep team front seven. You're not going to stop Alabama running the ball, and it's going to be awfully tough to you know stop them from filtering guys out in the backfield because your linebacking core, as you said, is Corey Flagg and the rest. Um, Miami needs depth, and that's what they're trying to get, get after. Two years from now, they repeat these classes. They'll be right in the mix, and no one will be surprised. And uh, you got to face up and, and, and we've always I, I want to be, a you know, the I mean, I'm a fan, but I'm also someone who's been around this for a while to understand that if you could continue to set your expectations higher than your talent is, you're going to be disappointed. So uh, I understand where Joaquin's coming from. I think offensively, Miami's going to score. And it's just going to be very tough for them not to too much speed everywhere, too much yeah. speed at the receiver position, too much speed at the running back position, a quality quarterback. And I'll put quarterbacks uh, at least, uh, you know, in the future, they know that when they go out and sell offensive linemen and running backs and, and wide receivers, you go, this is what we have. We have this guy and this guy, and both of those guys can play anywhere. So, uh, you know, that's the part of it. It doesn't bother me. The defense, is what they need to really shore up on. And that's why Jazz said getting those three linebackers, you get those three linebackers within a year and a half to two years, those guys will be like the Shaq Quartermans and, and guys like the, and Pinkney and such that really helped Miami turn around for a minute, you know, as far as defense and, and made plays. So we haven't had that. We need that from the linebacking position. We're set at, we're set in a second here. But oh, yeah. that's yeah, we're setting a second. It's just but that's what the, I can understand Dan, to, to answer that in a roundabout way. Like I did, I understand where he's coming from. He just has to kind of like back off a little bit, you know, uh, you know, let let this let this process p- play out. I think two more years after the 22 season, we'll have an indication of where this program is. And I think they could be top eight. Jazz, I'll give you the last word. Can Miami lose to Bama by bleeping 10 and not bleeping 35? I think they're about a 17 and a half point underdog in that game. The line opened up last week. I may or may not have already bet uh, Miami against the spread. So what do you think? I don't know what Blue's talking about. I see Miami winning by two touchdowns. Easy, right? Uh, Easy cover for me. This is easy for me. I mean, (laughs) no, I mean, look, um, he's, he's got a point. And by the way, I, I said Joel Rodriguez earlier. I meant Joaquin Gonzalez, but, you know, you can swap them out and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, same, um, same era. I mean, yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, Those Hispanics all sound the same. I'm you know? telling you. <laughs> 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 um, so, uh, yeah, look, it, Blue brings up a great, great point. At this point, it's not it's not about ele- the first 11. It's about the, the second and third 11. Right. Uh, and depth. That's 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 what's going to make the biggest difference uh, between, you know, uh, an Alabama and, a, and an Ohio State or Clemson and Miami at this point. That's not to say that, you know, it's going to take two or three years for them to really put together the recruiting class with this coaching staff that they have in place right now, which is the best coaching staff they've had since probably, um, you know, the Butch Davis and Larry Coker era, if you ask me. So, um it's going to take some time for them to really build up the depth that they need. They're getting there, right? They've got some depth yep. at places, right? The safety position, yep. maybe even running back, running, <laughs> absolutely running back. Uh, the offensive line is starting to build some sort of uh, a depth there as well, because yeah, yeah. so many guys returning. Um, I don't know if the talent is there just yet, but I think that the depth is going to play a big part in that. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to need to, uh, you're going to need to continue to build this up to beat, to beat a team like Alabama, or at least to, um, uh, to hang in there with them. Uh, do I see a 35 point uh, defeat? No, more like 10 points. Yeah, I can absolutely. And now listen, don't, and, and blue again, you nailed it again. They're going to score points. And right now this college football game, uh, college football is about scoring points. So if you can score a boatload of points and make one or two stops on defense, you're going to give yourself a shot to, to win against anybody. It doesn't matter. So, and, and we've seen that, you know, Alabama has been prone to give up some points recently. I know it's against SEC, SEC teams more than anything, but 
this is an SEC caliber offense that Miami has now, or, you know, whatever caliber offense you want to name it. Um, it's deep. Uh, they've got a lot of, a lot of speed. And uh, if they can score some points, you never know. It's going to be, it's going to be fun to watch. I think it's going to be a lot closer than the S experts think. Well said. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Huge thanks to Blue. Huge thanks to Jazz Santana. We will talk to you guys again next time on another episode of Five Rings Canes on the Five Reasons Sports Network.